healing generational trauma and improving our relationships. That's what we're going to talk about on the podcast today. Hi, everyone. It's a crazy time of year. I drove into my neighborhood the other night after a trip to Nashville to see our daughter perform. And so many of my neighbors had all of their Christmas lights up. Feels a little bit early, but I'm not complaining because it just makes me happy. It brings me so much joy. It just always surprises me when I see Santa and reindeer and all the blow up animals before Thanksgiving. So onto the podcast. I have requests for this topic that you're going to hear about today often. And I think before the holidays, dealing with generational trauma and the difficulty of relationships is really important. And it is so common. We all have stuff and we have things that we hold on to and we really don't realize that we need to do something about it until there's an explosion or maybe it comes up in just a yucky way. So we might not fix it, but we can can deal with it and we can improve how we feel. My guest is Lauren Zoller. She's a somatic therapist specializing in relationships. We're going to dive deep into the world of somatic therapy. What is that? Well, it's a unique approach that focuses on the nervous system and its connection to our emotional health. Lauren explains how traditional talk therapies often fall short as they don't cater to the way our nervous system communicates through sensations and through emotions. Somatic therapy identifies the nervous system's protective responses, and then it helps regulate them for deeper connections to ourselves and, of course, to the people we love. The conversation today will touch upon the four main survival responses of our nervous system. Maybe you've heard of these, fight, flight, freeze, and fawn, or people-pleasing. Lauren shares personal anecdotes to illustrate how these responses manifest in our lives and how they can affect our relationships. You're going to be surprised by how all of this works together and how your body feels and then how that relates to your nervous system. By the way, have I told you lately how much I appreciate you? I hope you're growing and you're learning each week here on the podcast. If you are, would you please share this with someone you know and then rate and review the podcast? You'll find it takes just two minutes and the link is in the show notes wherever you're listening. Also, if you want to leave me a voice message with a question I'm going to be answering here on the podcast, you can do that now. You can leave a question or a review and I will personally get all of these messages that link is also in the show notes. Let's get into the interview now with somatic therapist, Lauren Zoller. Lauren, thanks for joining me. I talk a lot about therapy here on the show because health is such a big part of making us whole, right? But sometimes talk therapy, people, they tend to plateau or they're not getting what they want out of it. Tell us about what you do and how it helps people. Yeah. So I am a somatic therapist and simply put somatic therapy is therapy of the nervous system. Mm. So oftentimes with traditional talk therapy, we will go into a session and we will word vomit about all of our trauma or <laughs> word vomit about the things that don't feel good in our life or things that aren't going well. And what somatic therapy does is it takes a different approach. In fact, the nervous system doesn't speak in story. It speaks in sensation and emotion. And when we can look and see where our nervous system is choosing protection over connection, and we can go in and regulate those protection responses, we can connect deeper to ourselves and to others. So essentially what I do, I specify in relationships. So I help women have deeper relationships to themselves and also find and keep healthy love with others. Well, I know you spend a lot of time working on relationships and I, I want to get into that in just a moment because we, it, it's hard to have a good relationship when you're struggling with your past or with trauma or with whatever. But let's talk a little bit more about the nervous system. What happens when we're not regulated or when our nervous system is um, whatever you would say, fight or flight, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What, yeah. How would yeah. someone identify they're in that stage? So the nervous system has four main survival responses and the four main survival responses are fight and flight, which many of us have heard of, and then freeze and fawn. And fawn is usually one that people haven't heard of. What the fawn response is, simply put, is people pleasing. So what my mother taught me at a very young age was that my happiness 
is dependent on other people being happy first. Mm -hmm. And if we look at the fun response, fun is people pleasing. It is, I'm going to discount myself so that you are okay. Mm -hmm. And if you're okay, then I'm okay. And this is actually a survival response. It's the way that our body goes into a safety response to receive love. So when we're talking about the nervous system and we're looking at these protection responses, we have to start to get really honest with ourselves and say, okay, am I not speaking my truth in fear of being rejected or in my case, in the hopes of being accepted or am I shutting down and not talking about my problems? Am I going into freeze because it feels scarier to actually speak or move because I could be rejected? Or do I run away from problems? Do I feel like when I get in a relationship and big emotions come up, do I run away because it feels too scary? Yeah. Or do I feel yeah. the need to fight? So it's looking at where are you protecting yourself from actually connecting with someone wow. else to restart. That is like how much of this is generational in what we're taught, you know, from our parents um, and what was classic in their generation that yeah. now we find ourselves doing. Great question. So it's funny because if you if you look at the pattern I was just speaking about with my mother, where I was taught that you do not get to sit down and eat your food until everyone else has eaten first. If we look back at my generational line, my great grandmother came over here from Poland. And when she came over, my my great grandfather said to her, listen, we're new here. You just have to be accepted. So do whatever you need to do in order for people to accept you. So she started people pleasing. She started going into these survival patterns. And again, she needed to survive in order for people to like her so she could be accepted and loved. And so that passed down to my grandmother and then to my aunts and then to my mother. And so here I was, right, as a woman in her you know, late 20s, early 30s, trying to have a deep, intimate relationship with someone. And I kept attracting these alcoholics who I felt like I could save. Mm. And if I could save them, it would make me worthy of love. Oh, wow. Which is that yeah. same dynamic I learned from my mother. If you take care of other people first, then you are worthy of love. So it all compounded from my great grandmother coming over here just to, to survive. Wow. Yeah. Let's talk about the the physical though. Like when you talk about the nervous system, can we feel like talk therapy? You might get some of this, mm -hmm. right? The generational part or people pleasing, but what is the physical element of, of all of this when you talk about the nervous system? Yeah. So the, the physical part is what somatic therapy is. And when you come into a session, we're actually tracking the nervous system by looking at what is your body doing in any given moment? So for instance, if you go into fight, the fight response or the flight response, you will feel your heart start, your heart rate start to lift. You will feel your blood rush into your extremities. So some people say, I feel tingling in my fingers. I feel tingling in my toes. That is the blood actually rushing to your extremities. In the fight response, you may even feel your fists start to clench. Hmm. Or in the flight response, your heels may start to lift because you're about to take off. Right. So all of these are tiny signals. Also, your eyes may start to, to flood the area. They might look left and right because you're scanning for threat. And so mm -hmm. there's this sense of your body wanting to mobilize to get away from threat. In the freeze fawn response, we see the off the opposite of that. The blood starts to rush back into our vital organs, but it starts to slow down. So our heart rate can sometimes get so slow that we don't even notice it. We start to feel cold. We start to feel like we're caving in. Our shoulders may come in towards one another. And oftentimes I know someone's in freeze because they look like deer in a headlight. Mm. Right? There's this sense of, oh my gosh, I can't speak. I can't say anything. For the fawn response, it's a little tricky because on the inside, people are frozen. But usually on the outside, they're peacocking. They're really boisterous. But if you ask them how they feel internally, they usually can't access how they feel because they're frozen internally. So it all, the nervous system gives you all of the clues that you need to heal. Wow. All right. So give us some tips in dealing with this and understanding what those, so the understanding those physical things, number one, mm -hmm. how do we then move past that to have 
better overall mental health and better ultimately than better relationships. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I'll say is that if you've never learned the language of your nervous system, that's where you start. And this is what working with a somatic practitioner or a somatic therapist can help you do is to really learn what is the language when my body goes into flight? How do I notice it? What does it feel like? What are the sensations when that happens? Also, what does it feel like to be in safety? How do I know that I'm in what we call ventral vagal connection, which is, if you remember the two parts of the nervous system, it's connection, it's safety. So the first thing is understanding the language. And uh, you do that, you can do research on your own, right? But I say work with a somatic practitioner to help with that. The second thing, and this is a fantastic exercise that everyone can do, this will help you learn the language of your nervous system, is to do what's called a somatic check-in. So the way that I guide my clients is to have them do these somatic check-ins to get used to the language of the nervous system. Because we need to remember the nervous system doesn't speak in story. So that story that you've been telling yourself about why something is happening the way it's happening, it's not serving your nervous system. You can't actually regulate in that space. So what I suggest doing is a somatic check-in. Set a timer on your phone to go off every three hours. And when the timer goes off, jot down what sensations you feel, what emotions you feel, and what you are doing. And start to watch the trajectory of how your body is unfolding. So for instance, if the timer goes off and you're answering emails, it's the middle of the day, and you notice your heart is super elevated and you're tapping your foot and there's this pit in your stomach, that's a really high chance that your body is in a survival response. Hmm. So you get curious about it. So that's the first place to start when you're starting to learn the language of the nervous system. Are you looking for ways to stay energized, healthy, and help your family stay healthy? I've started taking supplements from Seeking Health, and it has changed the game for me. I no longer worry that my family is getting enough of the vitamins we need, and I know the quality of what we're taking is top-notch. I take an immunity support supplement, magnesium, and several others, including electrolytes to stay hydrated. So many people ask me about these supplements that I've made it really easy for you to find right on my website, natalietisdall.com slash favorites. Also bonus, I have a coupon code to help you save 10% on your order. You will find that coupon code on the website as well. Go to natalietisdall.com slash favorites, click on seeking health. I may earn a small commission if you purchase there, but that's just to help my small business grow the website and the podcast to keep this news and good interviews coming your way. Again, natalietisdall.com slash favorites and click on seeking health. That's super helpful that you just become aware, obviously, of, of what's happening. So then how do you how do you get out of that? So mm -hmm. you say you're often in that survival response. How do you calm yourself that you so that you can uh, get out of that and think more clearly? So it's complicated because depending on how high you are in activation, this is again is why you work with a somatic practitioner, you will want to renegotiate that in different ways as you're working with a somatic therapist. However, a great tool for everyone to use is to actually notice if you're sitting down or if you're standing up, notice your butt on the chair. So actually notice it. Mm -hmm. And as you notice it, ask yourself, what sensations do I feel? And what emotions do I feel? Can I notice anything about my butt on the chair? And as you focus on that point, chances are you may feel warmth or you may feel a sense I had a woman today that felt a sense of softening. So see if you can be with that sensation and get it to grow. Next thing you know, if you can get it to grow throughout your entire body, you'll move from that sense of activation into a state of what we call ventral vagal, which is safety inside of your nervous system. But it takes practice and working with a somatic therapist is honestly the best way to do that. Is that so how do people find a somatic therapist? Is it pretty common? Are there talk therapists that also do somatic therapy? Absolutely. There are definitely talk therapists out there that do have training in somatic experiencing. 
My favorite place for people to go and look for a somatic therapist is the SEI website. So the Somatic Experiencing International website. You can go there and underneath the the line at the top of the page, there's a drop down that says find a practitioner. Mm -hmm. And you can find a practitioner in your area that also specifies in the area that you want to work in. That's great. So let's talk a little bit more about relationships now. Um, you know, a lot of people are held back from love, um, but other relationships too. It could be a relationship with your kids or your parents or your friends. Talk about how this helps relationships. So we have to remember again, if we go back to the beginning and what I was speaking about, the nervous system has two functions. We're either protecting ourselves or we're connecting. If at a young age, because what we know about the nervous system is that from the moment you are conceived, your tiny little nervous system starts to pick up mom's state of where mm. her ner nervous system was. So I'll give you a, a, an example. If you had parents who never validated your emotions or they weren't there physically, emotionally, or mentally as a young child, and you learned at a young age that in order to receive love, I have to shut down my emotions. I have to just stay small because mom doesn't express hers. So if I express mine, mom could have been, could maybe not give me love, or I may feel like, you know, I'm an outcast. You learn to protect yourself to receive love by shutting down emotions, freeze response. Uh -huh. Okay. So then fast forward to being an adult, chances are you're either in a relationship where you don't have deep conversations, or you may be dating and you notice that men are ghosting or women are ghosting. They just leave you with no explanation as to why. And the reason that happens is because you developed that familiar pattern in your nervous system to be okay in the freeze response. That is how your body has become familiar with receiving love. So until wow. you go in and regulate that freeze response and teach it safety, connection, you'll continue to repeat these patterns of connection or protection because that's what's familiar to your nervous system. How important is it that say you're looking um, to repair a marriage or just to find um, love? How important is it that both people are doing this to understand where their nervous system is? I mean, it's ideal. <laughs> it's ideal for both. And I have a lot of couples who've gone through my program who didn't start as couples. Right? I would work with the woman, let's say. Mm -hmm. And then she would find a partner and she realized how important it is to know safety in her body and to also want that safety in a relationship. And yeah. now her partner works with me, right? So that we can, we can teach that language because it truly is, I'll say, if you want a long lasting partnership that truly feels aligned and safe, mm -hmm. this work is, it's a non-negotiable, really. I think everyone on the planet should do it. Yeah. But what other tips do you have for people in, in getting to this place? I mean, identifying it, we, we know is important, but what tips do you have for understanding your, your body and your nervous system? Yeah. So I would get curious around what feels good to you and what makes you feel peaceful and calm and safe and start to incorporate more of that into your day-to-day -day routine. So for instance, if you're someone who is really high strung, and you feel like you're always going, going, going. Notice if going for a walk feels peaceful inside of your body. Or notice if going to yoga provokes a sense of calm inside of your system. Just start to bring your attunement inward and notice what feels good. And I know this sounds so simple, but the more that you can add in things that make you feel calm and safe, the more you expand your nervous system's capacity for connection. Yeah. Because you're yeah. not in survival. So it's yeah. A, knowing the language of your nervous system, but B, also really tapping into what feels good, what feels safe and doing more of that. You know, it just makes me think when, when we're always in that fight or flight, or we're always in that, your heart pounding, what happens to the body when, when you're in that so often? I think we live in this hustle culture, right? Mm -hmm. Where we're just working so hard and we feel like that's how, and for, for me, I get this way where I'm like, if I accomplish more, I'll feel better. Yeah. But then I'm always in that state of, 
whatever you would call it. I don't know if it's fight or just work, work, work. What happens to the body when we're not addressing the nervous system? Yeah. So believe it or not, when the nervous system is in a protection response. So this is the way that I like to explain it. Imagine a bear just suddenly appeared in the room with you. Okay. (laughs) A grizzly bear, like one that can actually (laughs) knock your head off your body. Your body in that moment is going to go into, and I say your body, your nervous system is going to go into a survival response to keep you safe from that bear. So what may happen, the blood may rush from your vital organs into your extremities, your heels may lift, and you may dart. You may start to run, which is the same nervous system response many of us feel on a day-to-day basis when we're answering emails and having to take calls from our clients and we're in that space of flight and fight. When that happens, you have to think about this from a physiological standpoint. Your nervous system is not thinking about, okay, if I take this path to the left and this path to the right, chances are I'm this path to the right may be more, I may be able to live longer than if I take the path. Your brain's not thinking. Your brain goes offline when yeah. you're in a survival response. It just is trying to get away from the bear. Yeah. When the brain goes offline, what else happens? Hormone production shuts down. Your immune system starts to shut down. Your ability to digest starts to shut down because the only thing your body is wanting to do in that moment is survive, not thrive. So if we live in a heightened fight flight state or freeze fawn state for an extended period of time, I see it all the time. We start to have digestion issues. We start to have immunity issues. We start to have hormone issues. We can't think clearly. We have fatigue. We have brain fog. It's the list goes on. So it's important that we know safety. It's deeper than just relationships, right? It's in everything that you do. Yeah. I think that's such an important point of just overall health and in understanding this. And for a lot of people, they have trapped um, issues. Um, And maybe you can speak to this of even trauma from childhood. And that plays into all of this too. Yeah, for sure. Well, and when we talk about trauma, the actual somatic definition of trauma, it is the stuck psychosomatic response to an overwhelming event. So something that was too fast, too much, or Mm -hmm. too soon for your body to access safety. And what happens is that if you had an event in the past where that fight, flight, freeze, or fawn response didn't have time to complete to safety, it gets stuck. And next thing you know, you bump up to a situation that's similar to what you experienced when that initial stuck response happened and your nervous system goes into survival all over again. That's what trauma is. So in essence, somatic therapy goes into those stuck responses. And what it does is it allows the completion cycle to happen so that you can access safety and that trauma response can be renegotiated. Yeah. And you might not even know that that's what's happening might have been something that you thought you dealt with, but you really didn't. Yeah. Well, because most of us deal with it through talk, through verbal processing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We talk about it to our therapist. We call our best friend and we word vomit about it, but we haven't addressed how the nervous system feels in relationship to that trauma. And until you get your nervous system on board with your cognitive awareness, you're going to continue to repeat those cycles. Yeah. Oh, all of this is so good and so helpful. Um, where can people, if they want more information, they want to learn more from you or follow you, where can they find you? Yeah. So you can follow me on Instagram. That's where I'm most active at Lauren Zoller. Also, you can go to my website, laurenzoller.com. I talk all about this. We're actually getting ready to release a somatic therapy certification. So if anybody's interested in becoming certified in somatic therapy, you can do that too. All of it though, is on my Instagram and on my website. Terrific. Lauren, thanks so much for helping us understand this and why it's so important. And I look forward to following you. I've been doing so for some time and I've learned a lot. Um, And we're always, don't feel for anyone who's never heard of this, that you have to fix it right away. We're always learning and developing and understanding our nervous system and our health. And that's why we do this every week and trying to learn. So true. Yep. Thanks again, Lauren. Thank you for having me, Natalie.